As part of my new idea to have 30 chess videos in 30 days, I've decided to look at some fundamental endgame positions, and I think this position, known as the Lucena position, is really one of the central ones in all rook endings because it illustrates the most the fundamental win, which is rook and pawn and king against just a rook and a lone king. And I think that it's important to study these positions because they, they actually do arise in games. I know some people think, you know, why study these obscure endings? They don't ever happen, but as somebody who's played a lot of tournament games, I can say I've, I've had positions like this several times. And also, it's fundamental in the sense that it illustrates the basic ideas of rook endings, one of which we'll see shortly is forcing the enemy king away from your pawn, and the other of which is getting your king in front of your pawn, which has already happened here. And so I just want to go over a quick explanation of how to win from this position, and I think if players study this and become familiar with this position, it'll help in all sorts of rook endings. So the first idea, like we said, is to put as much distance between the enemy king and your pawn as possible, since, as we can see in this position, the black king really restricts the white king. So we want to clear some room so the king can get away. And also uh, note, this position and the solution works for any pawn except for the rook pawns. On the rook pawns, it's a draw because it's too hard. The king can't really escape the corner. But it works for any other pawn that's advanced to the seventh rank with the king in front. So we start off with rook d1. So that's, like I said, an important idea is forcing the king away. And now king e7. And here I want to show that, base, you know, cruder ideas like king c7 fail because black can just keep checking the enemy king. And he can't. white can't really make progress. As we can see, you know, he can come back and keep going. He can try to go here, but... Inevitably, the king is going to have to come back in front of the pawn, and as we can see, the king and pawn alone are not enough to promote against a rook. So, we need to come up with, and this is an important idea in rook endings, we need to come up with, a, and all endings, is a way to use all our pieces at once. So we want the rook and the king to work together to help promote the pawn. So the central idea is the move rook d4, moving the rook to the fourth rank. The point of this move will come apparent shortly. Um, there are several defenses. We'll look at rook a1 first to sort of Black bides his, his or her time waiting, you know, to try to check the king. So now when we come out, the important difference is white, black can check, but here we play the surprising move king c6. The point of which is, well, first of all, because the king is farther away from the first check, it can't get back to the pawn. So it's really just this rook against the pawn. When we play rook c1 check, we play king b5. And now we can meet this check with rook d4, rook b4, winning. And this idea is known as building a bridge. When we move the rook to the fourth rank, we play rook d4, we're building a bridge in the sense of connecting, making a way so that we can connect the white king and rook to the pawn to prevent these checks. As we just saw, rook a1, king c7. It's a very important idea. If we notice, we finesse the king here. We can't come up right away to c5 because the pawn hangs, so we stay on the defense of the pawn. And now when he checks, we, c we can finally come up to b5. The pawn isn't hanging. And when rook b1 check, we play rook b4, winning the game. We built the bridge. So the important idea was we brought our rook and king and used all the pieces together to promote the pawn. So the c key move, moving the rook to the fourth rank. And then another possible defense is king e6. And here again we see king c7, rook c2. Familiar idea. Now here, you know, if check, we play the same thing, king b5. Say white plays rook b1, I mean black, trying to prevent promotion. Now the important thing is that we can check the king even farther away, yet another important idea. And after king f5, we can play rook c4. Now the king is so far that it's really not a factor, um, because the idea is that if rook b2, we're just going to play king c7, and the pawn is going to promote next move. And if king here, we have the simple win with, I think, rook c5 works, and then wherever the king goes, we're going to play rook b5 and win the game. So, as we can see, the most of the defenses are based on getting this rook to the fourth rank, forcing the king away, and then using the king and rook together to protect the b-file. Finally, rook b4, and again, the solution works. Well, yes. So, as you can see, the key to the Lucena position, which is the fundamental rook ending, is forcing the king away and then moving the rook to the fourth rank so you can build that bridge thusly. And it also highlights that when you have a rook and pawn against a rook and king, the key thing is to get your king in front of the pawn so that you can get the Lucena position. And so this, along with the Philidor position, which I'll examine tomorrow, 
forms the two fundamental positions in rook and pawn endings. So now you know how to win with a rook, pawn, and king against just a rook and a king as long as it's on one of the files B through G. I hope this is useful, and if you have any questions, you know, post in the thread or add a comment because this will be on YouTube. I hope that was instructive. Thanks.